So it has released the grand patch notes, the resurgent update. This includes everything with your Norska, with your um, overhaul and everything of the old world races, with your Queen of the Crone DLC. Everything that's coming tomorrow is going to be included in this resurgent update. So today we're going to go over those patch notes real loosely on some of the other stuff. And we're going to go pretty heavily into the, the balance changes. But... As you guys know, you know, this brings, like I just said, 30th, 30th anniversary regiments of renown, um, bolsters a lot of the uh, stuff from the old world, namely Beastmen, Norska, Bretonia, Warriors of Chaos, Wood Elves, uh, with 30 unique, unique elite unit variants in the Mortal Empires campaign. So we, we know we're getting that. We know we're getting all of our Queen of the Crone action. You, you guys know what's coming here. But we do know that the Shrine of Cain, the Shrine of Cain is coming and that the uh, Sword of Cain is going to be a mechanic for all elves, High Elf, Dark Elf, and Wood Elf. Um, we know where Ungrim is now moving to uh, Karakadron in the Mortal Empires campaign, and he gets Red Ruin right from the start. Uh, High Elves get two new technologies from the Shadowlands and Strength of Averlorn. And uh, for how that works is uh, your... Um, it, it basically increases... From the Shadowlands helps out with the... I think it's... I wrote it down somewhere here. Um, oh, there it is. <laughs> uh, missile Defense and Leadership. And it's a... Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, missile defense and and uh, leadership, and it's a tier three ability, uh, or in, mili in military advancements, rank three. And then uh, the other one, the Averlorn one, strength of Averlorn is a uh, missile and leadership bonus, and that is a tier four. I'm sorry, melee defense and armor, and it's tier four. So you're basically are, are you gonna you're gonna boost up your shadow warriors survivability, and then your um, your handmaidens and your sisters of Averlorn's actual kind of staying ability. But we know that those two are coming. We uh, get the dwarf slayers units, we get dwarf forging, we get some new landmarks, we get the uh, Skaven food rework, a bunch of stuff. All the Skaven monster hunts are here. New Skaven, uh, I'm sorry, Nor I'm sorry, Norska monster hunts. All the uh, Norska tech is updated. So we get a lot of stuff that applies to Skaven lizardmen, tomb kings, obviously, dark elves, high elves. So. It's definitely geared more towards making a Norska move towards any of those factions in your Mortal Empires campaign and some new confederation dilemmas alongside that as you kind of expand out. We get some new additions with the dwarfs, as we know. Uh, new skills for Belagar. We get new abilities for Thorgrim, but obviously Ungrim here is, is the big uh, winner of the, of the cake here when it comes to uh, all the dwarf goodies. Uh, but we get a lot of cool stuff with the dwarfs as well. Um, a lot of good bug, bug fixes. The, here's the big ones that a lot of people really have pointed out and, and I'd say clamored the most for when we were talking so much about uh, the Ever Chosen Invitational and the things that people notice. So you get your overall lighting balance pass across all battle map environments, improved SSAO to reduce over occlusion, improved shadows for better frame to frame stability. So that's pretty huge. Uh, this one's actually really huge too. AI will no longer dodge every artillery projectile. projectile. And also auto resolver is going to get a little bit of an overhaul as well. So artillery won't just get sniped out and kills should be evenly distributed within the auto resolver calculation between similar units um and this as well oh i thought this was something else never mind never mind um but this is a big 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 one legendary lords will now be recruitable when you confederate with that faction when the lord is in a wounded state so you can uh wound out say Tyrion if you're if you're avalorn against Lothurn, and you can actually recruit him later on. So that's a pretty huge thing. It used to be that if you wanted to confederate with someone, if that lord was dead, you would not get that lord, and that kind of sucked. So that does add that. And we went over this in our last video here, but here is the food system kind of spelled out for you really quick. Added some food to the exotic animal building chain. We saw that. Modified food gain from Skaven Devious Planning, Edict, and Remove Income Reduction. But we also saw it added to a lot of the other... Um, Plans, all, all the quote unquote plans on the research gets the food increase. I increased food gain from the Skaven Ascendancy right. And then lastly, added food to top levels of Skaven Energy Building Chain. The Energy Building Chain is, remember guys, that's the one that increases your income by a percentage uh, within the region slash um, environment. <clears throat> But we also, this is kind of a weird one, benchmarking feature, benchmark, benchmarking feature has now been added to laboratory, so that's kind of nifty, kind of cool. But there's a lot of uh, cool stuff that's added in gameplay here. Uh, for instance, um, they lower the amber cost for the final tier of the Oak of Ages to 80. A lot of stuff that's kind of uh, overall quality of life increases. Recruitment time 
recruitment time reduced by one turn for black orcs, witch elves, and white lions of trace. So white lions of trace are no longer a two turn crap unit. They're now a one turn crap unit. So they've got that going for them. Uh, black orcs no longer suffer from deep waters attrition, which is really good because you want them to kind of sail across the whole entire map. Uh, Krokgars obliterate the undead now affects the tomb kings, which is great because it didn't before. Um, this is cool too because, uh, and I really think that this is uh, tangent here, side tangent. Bretonia has been the underdog of a lot of campaigns, I think. They got rebalanced campaign traits in Mortal Empires and now have rebalanced economy skills. I'm going to be doing a Bretonia Mortal Empires campaign here soon and I because I think that they really got a really good overhaul of a lot of their research trees. I mean, you can go right down into uh, the Southlands with Bretonia and Confederate and, and have a whole grand old time there, like immediately kind of doing your own errantry wars. So I think that Bretonia really kind of is is really overlooked in inside of like say you know the tomb king's campaign or now the new high elf and dark elf campaigns but i really think the bretonian one is is a very strong and very good one here but a lot of really cool other stuff was done uh, so definitely take a look at this uh, the, we'll have a link to this in the uh, the comment section as well i'm sorry the actual description of the video so you can take a look at the actual official total war uh com or, uh, um patch notes but you can see that some of the other stuff that's added added wa has been changed to have a map wide buff with unique visuals we saw that during our campaign uh, it has a really cool like a flashing green yellow effect above every single unit's uh banner uh hell cannon's homing has been fixed which i'm not gonna lie was it ever an issue because the hell cannon's so fucking strong that i'm i'm more terrified that it's just destroying my entire army more than i am that it's homing is not fixed <laughs> but that's that's cool um, AI will no longer dodge every artillery uh, projectile, which we covered earlier. Um, summon spells that get interrupted during the casting animation will no longer consume a use, which is huge because if you try to summon Krell way back, um, it would consume um, a use and it would be on recycle and it would honestly it would piss me off more than anything. So I hated it. This one's kind of a weird one. We'll get to it when we talk about Empire, but Balthazar Gelt will now be able to hide when on a mountain in the woods, which is good and that should be a thing. But it's like, I, I didn't even realize that was a thing because it's like I never thought to sneaky guilt action is that the new meta who knows but uh let's see here <clears throat> other usability improvements here a lot of stuff with the ui has changed um a lot of stuff that just kind of like general things like this like tomb princes will no longer move out of the portrait window when you issued an order stuff like that like little kind of things that you you would notice while you're playing and go hmm that's uh don't really like that so a lot of stuff has happened with battles as well that this includes many of the sound effects and uh other kind of things like uh where is it here yeah, I think this was, it was something like where it's a, it, the chariot won't play the sa the proper sound if it's not on the right, uh, the, the right surface. Like if it's in water, it'd still play the sound of it on, on ground or like the sound effects of um, the high elf high mage's armor now sounds better uh, in conjunction with the way the model actually look looks. So there's a lot of really cool little things here that, that kind of quality of life. And again, little things that you might have noticed that you're like, hmm, that's kind of off. Like melee swing sounds should no longer play when the dread spears are idling. So stuff like that you might have just noticed. Auto resolver improvements that we've talked about here. And this is this is pretty huge because it, it makes the auto resolver a little bit less of a just like, oh, click, click. Uh, okay, well, I just got fucked. My army, all my important characters got killed. My artillery got sniped out. So reduced advantage of superior factions in the auto resolver. Fixed a rare instance where melee lords could be assigned to ranged during the auto resolver calculation. Fix an issue where you couldn't auto resolve against books of Nagash, rogue armies at sea if you were unable to withdraw. So a lot of nice little uh, th things as well. Audio improvements here. Oh, here it is. Fixed Tomb King's chariots using the wrong ground type on water. Those bastards. Now, here's probably what the, the real meat and potatoes, now that we're nine minutes into this video, meat and potatoes of this patch notes, and I think this is going to be what a lot of people in the multiplayer circuit are really concerned about, and even in campaign, because this, this applies to campaign. And this is the unit balancing, so we're going to pop over to this. I've pretty much taken all these notes. These are the same notes. There's nothing different about these. I've just highlighted them accordingly. So... General, let's just look at this part. Halved impact of summon units on balance bar. Adjusted regiments of renown stats to match new rank nine unit stats more correctly, which is good because you've got regiment uh, you've got regiment of renown units coming in with the 30th anniversary patch that needed a little facelift. Increased mass for most infantry lords and heroes. And honestly, that that could be the theme of this entire patch. Almost everything has an increase or reduction in mass on one way or another. See, pass on heavy cavalry mount entity mass. So. Almost everything has gotten some sort of uh, 
uh, kind of tweak on their mass. So let's take a look at this. What I've done here is anything that's emboldened is pretty significant. That's why you're going to see this is all pretty huge. Uh, red is a is a nerf. Blue is a buff. If it doesn't have a color, it's just kind of like a, eh, well, some things happened, some things didn't. So we can see the biggest thing here is that the healing amount of Realm of Souls has been increased for the Tomb Kings. That's very significant. Uh, Realm of Souls has always been great, but it's always just kind of been like a nice to have, not necessarily compulsory. The nice thing is the at the end when you can summon those Ushapti. But now, um, and I've played a Realm of Souls or a game just recently with the Tomb Kings that's going to be coming up shortly after this video. And it is great to see that increased healing kicking off. But you can see some stuff from, with uh, Chariot of the Gods, and that's going to be a little bit of a theme here too. Um, all the Chariot Lords kind of got a bit of a tweaking one way or another. So his melee attack and melee defense was dropped, making him a little bit less tanky. You know, he's, he's a little bit more papery now. But you can see here, plus 35 AP melee damage, plus 5 bonus versus infantry, plus 15 base melee damage. So he's going to do a crap ton more damage. Uh, this should really be a buff highlight. But I just kept it like that because there, there are they made them weaker in the sense that they can take less damage or they, they're prone to taking damage faster and they hit more less often. Well, moderately less often, but they're going to be hitting like trucks every time they do hit. So important to note. Uh, skeleton archers, archer chariots. Again, that should be a buff too. That's weird. It's like I'm drunk. Um, minus 115 multiplayer cost. Your sepulchral stalkers, regiment of renown. They got less likely to hit. A little bit tankier. Now, the biggest thing here is Arkan the Black's Tomb Blade of Arkan. It no longer heals. It summons a large unit of skeleton warriors instead of healing. And the Liber Mortis now gives plus 8 leadership duration reduced from 20 to 15. So this thing's going to last not as long. You're not going to get that heal, but it's going to give you uh, some leadership. So I guess you got that going for you. Uh, with Liber Mortis, at least, I mean. Uh, but the Tomb Blade of Arkan will no longer heal you. Now, as a whole... All of the constructs have gotten a pretty significant nerf. Uh, if you're looking at the Cameron War Sphinx, minus 15 armor, minus health, minus charge bonus, the Necro Sphinx, across the board, everything is pretty much nerf with a plus three melee attack. So yay, it can hit more often. Even the uh, Regiment Noun version got a, a pretty significant uh, nerf as well. The Hero Titan nerfed Blessed Light Legion of, of Fakath, which is, uh, admittedly, it's Skeleton Spear Warriors. Uh, was still pretty significantly nerfed and the tomb scorpion was nerfed and that was i i think kind of a little a little more on the needed end the tomb scorpion was very tanky because of attack animations was hard to really pin down but the ushabti got a nerf in the direction that i think is a good balance for them a good a good balancing nerf uh this is definitely more of a balance than a nerf i'd say is that it, it made it makes them a little bit less especially the ushabti great bow and the chosen of the gods they are a little bit more papery, I and mean, they can get killed a little bit quicker. They're not as stockier. They're not as they're not as tanky. They can get brought down a little bit quicker, but they're still going to be outputting tons of range damage, which is great. The Ushabti, on the other hand, I didn't see them as like this unit that can just like wreak havoc on everyone. But I guess in the in the scope of making the range ones less armor, you kind of have to do it to the melee ones as well. Uh, but Cetra's uh, his War Sphinx as well is all, is also going to be getting it's uh, it's uh, what's it called. It's it's necessary buff. I'm sorry, King Nakesh's Scorpion Legion. That's the uh, that's the 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 Spearman unit. I got I got that mixed up there, but still the a, a debuff to them, a nerf to, as a word to them as well. Skeleton chariots though, minus an MP cost. Your Kalita's a little bit bigger and or has a little bit more mass in through the Necropolis Knights, so they can actually do a little bit more significant charging. Screaming Skull Catapult did get an increase in accuracy. In fact, almost every single siege piece or artillery piece got an increase in its uh, accuracy. And I will try to timestamp all of these changes for each each race so that you guys can kind of at least uh, follow along here and uh, get along, get an idea of what, uh, what changed. So let's jump into Vampire Counts. So Vampire Counts, the kind of things that are like, meh, some bonuses, some not so bonuses. Vargeists, plus 10 AP, minus 10 base. So they can hit through armor better, but they can't do as much base damage. Um, Devils of Schwartz, Hoffen, same kind of thing. Minus 10, minus 2 melee defense, plus 10 melee damage, minus 10 uh, melee uh, base damage. 
sorry, plus 10 AP. The biggest thing for vampire counts, though, outside of their, uh, as far as nerfs go, uh, they, their Mortis Engine and Claw of Nagash now have to be, the Reliquary Corruption Aura now deactivates out of melee, so they have to be in that melee, and the Claw of Nagash got a small little hit to its melee defense by one, but shouldn't be too significant. Uh, Varric's Reaver's got a minus three uh, melee defense uh, uh, nerf as well. And then Shigoi Ghoul King got a, a little knockdown in its health. Nothing huge. Remember, though, guys, for any of these things that have multiple units, like the Sternsman, for example, this is uh, minus three melee defense per individual model. It's not just, you, you don't just hover over it and say, oh, they've got 180 melee defense. Now it's, now it's 177. It's per each model. So you have to take that into account. Like the Terrorgeist is minus 100 health as a whole, which is fine. But if this was, let's say, the Sternsman, it'd be minus 100 health per model. So you do have to kind of take those things into account when you're looking at this. Uh, the Tithe got a little melee defense uh, nerf. And uh, the Cohen Koenigstein Stalkers, a little bit melee defense buff, or uh, I'm sorry, nerf with a little buff to their melee cost. But the big thing here is all of the Vampire Lords have gotten a significant buff. They, are, they do way, 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 way more damage now. I mean, four melee attacks, so they're hitting more often. 30 AP, 20 base damage. That is huge for them. I mean, if you look at Manny, Manny von Karstein got himself a little minus 50 to his MP cost as well. So he's really up and he's going to be a little bit more competitive um, as far as trying to get more units out on the field. You look at Helmand Gorst. Uh, who gives a shit about Helm and Gorse? But Liber Noctis now deals on average 30% less damage to self. So I guess he's got that going for him. No more, no more self-giving. But uh, Krell is huge. Plus 20 bonus versus large. Plus 5 hit reaction ignore chance. Plus 5 knock interrupt chance. Plus 450 mass. So he's not going to be knocked around as easily. And remove wind up time from Lord of Undeath. Meaning that he can be cast almost immediately from Kemler. Which is huge because Kemler could get knocked around a ton because he had low mass. And if you had a, a hor horses and heroes, I'm sorry, lords and heroes on horses could just keep Kemler pinned down. At least this way, Lord of Undeath will actually kick off quicker and he actually can summon up Krell almost immediately, which is great. The same thing with Vlad and uh, the Red Duke. Vlad also gets uh, Arcane Conduit in multiplayer, which is very nice. But the Red Duke as well is going to be way, way, way more terrifying on the battlefield. Uh, vampires as a whole do have a slight increase in their cost. But they uh, do have a much, much more damage coming out of them. So that's pretty awesome as well. Vargul, uh, Skeleton Spearman got some buffs. Blood Knights, plus 2 AP with a little bit of, ma of uh, mass increase as well too. So they can go up against some of their heavier hitting, heavier hitting larger creatures and still get through their armor and bring them down. Because it's one of the very few anti-large things next to the Skeleton Spearman that you can bring in the Vampire Count's army. But the White Kings as well. Little uh, bo bonus to their um, anti infantry, uh, Cairn Race, Dire Wolves, Dire Pack, all that kind of action got some good buffs. Let's jump on over to the uh, Dark Elves here. We'll talk a little bit more about them. So I, I was actually surprised how much of this was blue and not red, <laughs> but uh, it, it goes to show here's that, here's that chariot thing I was talking about. So plus three melee attack, minus eight melee defense, minus two bonus versus infantry, but plus 70 AP melee damage, plus 30 base melee damage. So Malekith, he got a little bit of a nerf in his melee defense and his uh, BVI, his, his uh, anti-infantry, but a huge buff in his damage. So on a cold one chariot alone, that's only on a cold one chariot. Um, the Death Hag on the Blood Cauldron, her Blood Shield of Cain, it's now from 11% down to 6% physical resistance. So that's a pretty good buff, I think. Because I don't know if that Blood Cauldron applied to Marathi, or I'm sorry, um, Hellebron, but she's, as we know right now, very broken and very, very destructive. But we don't know. She might be changed by the time the patch comes out, but I I, I don't, I doubt that it's not. In this, we won't see it. Um, as we can see, the Dread Lords as a whole got a little bit more melee attack. The Sorceress's Cold One no longer has uh, Primal Instinct, which is good that, so that you don't have to worry about your Sorceress just running off into the night at no at one random point. Uh, Kenad Assassins got a huge buff to their melee AP. And then Cold One Dread Knights, Shades, and, and both Shades, I guess, both had a minus 50 to their cost, which is great because Cold One Dread Knights really need some love. Um, I think they're a really great option. Uh, they, they, they bring a lot to the table, but they're just so expensive that it's hard to want to bring them to the table. And if you have the Knights of the Even Hand, which is the Regiment of Renown, Cold One Dread Knight, they don't have Primal Instinct, so they can actually stay in the fight and do some serious damage. But again, they come with a hefty, hefty, hefty price tag for only being an AP unit. 
Now the Hydra, on the other hand, has a Fire Breath now targets unit center by default, which is great because if you've ever used a Hydra, you know that their Fire Breath has is very, very whimsical and is very prone to outright missing. So it's great to see that kind of uh, coming around to, uh, to full circle. Now let's move over to Lizardmen, which... Got, got some pretty interesting little little knocks here and there. The Skink Chiefs and Priests on Pterodons have a increased Rider Projectile Hitbox. So that that's kind of is what it is. The Skink Chief, which... I See, I don't know if this is Skink Chief as a whole or if he's on... When he's on a Pterodon or what. But minus 5 AP missile damage and minus 5 missile base damage, which is good because if you have a Skink Chief on a Pterodon, you can just... He can pretty... He can whittle away something very effectively. The Skink Chiefs and Priests... Chief and Priest on Pterodons are actually pretty scary. So that's kind of a, a, a maybe a very much needed balance on, on those guys. Uh, Krokar, uh, the Carnosaurs as a whole, Grimlock, Carnosaurs, uh, both Saurus Oldbloods and Scar Veterans, all got a little bit of a nerf here. So no more we're going to see Carnosaur um, dinosaur parties where they're raging through our lines, just ripping us asunder, because they have a huge knock to their charge bonus and to their health with, with about 400 health on each one of these models, more or less. Even the Feral Carnosaur itself got the same exact nerf um, that matches the other ones. So they, they really wanted to curve back that uh, Carnosaur play is what it looks like. But on the other hand, Krokgar on foot, not going to be knocked around as much. The Horned Ones get a little bit of, an, of, a, of a buff here. I, I really want to see Horned Ones and Death Knights, or I'm sorry, Dread Knights, Cold One Dread Knights, buffed up a little bit more. I, I think that they're so cool and so thematic, but they just the cost to their value is just not there. Uh, Croxagore's got a really good buff as well. Saurus as a whole got some good buffs, um, good mass buffs, good melee defense buffs, so they can stay in the fight a little bit better, a little bit longer. Temple Guard just got a little 20 mass, like no big deal there. But that knocks out those guys. It's talking to about some uh, high elves here. And high elves, you can see, buffs across the board, which is, is, is kind of needed, and not in a crazy way. The Princess does more AP damage and missile damage, which is nice. The Sun Dragon um, for both the Prince and the actual default Dragon is minus in is a reduction in cost, and uh, Tyrion can, uh, can sprint around a bit faster. The uh, Mage on Anthemar Chariot, though, is minus one collision attack max targets. I don't know what that means. I'm not going to lie. I don't know what the hell it means, but it is there, and I wanted to bring it up because it is important for, for some people, I think. All right, but now, the Skaven. Uh, Skaven got some pretty interesting, got a pretty interesting nerf and a interesting set of buffs. So the Plague Priest and the Plague Furnace, same exact thing as your Vampire Counts with their Claws of Nagash and the Mortis Engine. They have to be in combat for their Billowing Death Aura to activate. I don't see, I haven't seen a ton of Plague Furnaces, but I know they're strong. I just haven't seen a ton out there. They also got minus 10 armor, so it's a little bit easier to take down now. But as far as buffs go, their Death, Death Globe Bombardiers are Explosion as a whole got an overhaul in this patch. Uh, a lot of things that do explosion damage got it tweaked one way or another. So Bombardiers and also uh, Warpower Thor's got that tweak. Uh, Playcock Catapults are now a little bit more accurate, and you have a little buff to uh, Night Runner and Gutter Runner Slingers, which, man, those things are devastating. I, I don't know if I want that buff at all. Can I, can I revert that back? Can we not have that butch buff? Thanks, guys. We'll fix it in post. Sounds good. Moving on to Warriors of Chaos. Now, Sarth Oriel got a little uh, little nerf here, a little, uh, little debuff. So reduced collision, reduced collision height, increased projectile hitbox, and added Arcane Conduit and Multiplayer. So Arcane Conduit's great. It just means that overall, he's not going to be able to bulldoze everyone he just reaps through, and he's going to be a little bit easier to uh, hit with ranged weapons. Not like It's like a huge increase in, like this increased projectile hitbox just simply means that Things that are having to shoot over or shoot into him have a better chance of hitting him just by the, the grace of the hitbox being larger. Uh, Kolek, though, and as well as the Shagoths, got a pretty substantial debuff, a knock in their health and a minus in their charge bonus here. So they'll be a little bit less scary, but still, I don't think uh, I don't think they're going to be any less scary than they already are. I mean, it's not, not going to be a huge debuff, but it'd still be one nonetheless. Marauder Horsemen got a little bit of an increase in cost here. I think it's to kind of match up with the Norska Horsemen and their Javelin, their Javelineers cost to kind of be a little more hand in hand. As far as buffs though, their lore choices, including Archeon, got a really good set of buffs. So Archeon on foot, 
got a little bit of increased mass. Any Lord on foot with increased mass is very good because that means that they didn't have that. See, plus 750. Uh, Krokar got plus 600. That means that they were getting knocked around too much, way more than they should have. So that just kind of levels that playing field. Now, on Droghar, he is a little bit faster and has a little bit more mass too, so his uh, charges are going to be a little more impactful. But the Lords as a whole, and this is a big thing too, the Mana Cores, um, they, with the inclusion of Dark Elf Mana Cores, all the Mana Cores are getting buffs. So Warriors of Chaos ones, the uh, Beastmen ones, the ones in the Dark Elves already have that buff. So you'll be seeing Mana Cores that actually are a little bit more terrifying. In fact, Hellebron on a Mana Core in, in Campaign is just stupid strong. So 164 health, 25 AP, and 40 bit, uh, base melee damage. So you can see it's uh, you're definitely going to get some some use out of those uh, Warriors of Chaos. All those exalted on on uh, all the exalted heroes have a huge increase to their leadership, a nice little buff to their health, and good staying power overall with that armor bonus on the Chaos Steed, and some good melee damage bonuses for some of them. And the Manticore and Dragon Ogres and Hell Cannons all got their buffs. Of course, you know Hell Cannon now uses a fixed trajectory corrected by homing, improves Hell Cannon projectile homing. So, you know, that's even more terrifying than it is. But on to green skins. So, the biggest thing for green skins, obviously, is Wa is now a map wide ability that gives 26 melee attack, 18% charge bonus, and 24% speed for 30 seconds, which recharges in melee. Super cool, super thematic. Um, a lot of them, a lot of the green skins got kind of tweaking buffs, or um, I'm sorry, tweaking balance changes, you know. Reduction in melee attack, increase in leadership, or increase in melee defense. You see that on these three units here. Uh, as far as uh, nerfs go, you've got a, a, a pretty wide reduction in melee attack across all these, these uh, units here. <clears throat> With some minor buffs to the melee defense, if at all. Um, as Dirk gets squigs at a minus two to, to melee defense. Uh, Mogrub's Magic Mangy Marauders, same thing here too. Uh, and Mangy Marauders are, are pretty, uh, I think they're one of the best units in the green skin roster. Like, like almost like an auto pick for me anytime I choose them, which has been like an, a whopping five times. So you guys know how, how, f how fond I am of green skins. But Wurzog, Goblin Great, and Great Shaman both got the uh, wall ability, which is great. Means they're going to be way, way more competitive because they can use this this amazing thing. Uh, Wurzog's War Paint was changed from 11% though to 6% physical resistance. So he is a little bit less on the resistance chain, but 5% less in his uh, physical resistance. Grimgore though gets a nice little boost to his mass and three melee defense. And Skarsnik shall no longer be punted around the battlefield at a 1300 increase to his mass. But for other units like Crimson Killers, Teeth Robbers, we get a little increase to their abilities here and there. You guys can see that uh, from the little. Uh, display here and i'll put this i'll put a, a shareable link to this in the uh the description as well so you guys can see all these all these things if you want um hopefully this makes it a little bit easier to read and the things that are a little bit more pivotal or better and bold um stand out a little bit more but let's jump on over to those uh those wood elves here so wood elves i, I i'm glad that this is all red you know for a stalker Ancient Treeman reduction in health, Durthu reduction in health, Y Riders uh, reduction in mass, Sisters of Thorn have are capped out on their Shield of Thorns and Curse of Air and Air. Orion, though, got a good buff. You know, Orion was kind of falling behind bonus versus large, AP missile damage, and 30 base missile damage. So he's going to be very, very, very strong again. He was never really out of strength, I don't think. I think they just made him even stronger to, I guess, balance these things out. But I don't think that. I'll be honest, I don't think these are the things that were making Wood Elves top tier, super strong, you know, just meta, de meta defining really good. Ancient Treeman, not taken that often. Durthu, while strong, not always taken. Wild Riders, very, very good. Sisters of Thorn, kind of a niche pick, but also extremely good. Very, very, very good. Forest Stalkers, meh, meh, meh. I mean, or Forest Stalker, like the, that's the actual skill, Forest Stalker, sorry. Um, I don't fight in trees a whole ton with Wood Elves, so that 5% reduction in defense, melee defense for the entire army isn't going to be like game-changing for me, but I could see how it could be very beneficial in the, in the times that you would try to exploit that. So I, I could definitely see at least the value out of it. But Beastmen, bah! Ugh, God, I hate them. Senegors, Sigors, and Bray Shaman all got a little bit of a, a nerf here. Again, you get the little... Chariot kind of retweaking they've done. Cygors have slightly reduced accuracy, which I'm I'm all for. Senegords have a slight reduction in their mass. But the big thing here is Kazrak. Kazrak has gotten a big buff this uh this patch here. He's got a 650 buff to his mass. Dark Mail now allows effect 
now always affects wizards in 40 meter radius rather than relying on them to be casting inside the range. Debuff changed to minus 18 armor and minus 9 melee defense. So he himself is a little bit scarier now. Uh, his Razor Gore Chariot got the same kind of treatment that a lot of these other chariots got. So two melee attack increase. Got Vanguard deployment. That's just big, big, big thing. In fact, I'll even I'll embolden that. Uh, 40 AP melee, minus one collision attack max target, plus 10 base melee damage, and plus 0.2 melee attack interval, which means actually I think he's uh, actually attacks a little bit slower. And same thing with the Razor Gore Chariot as well, because it is the same type of chariot. Minotaurs are a little bit fiercer on the charge, and Feral Manicores kind of falling in line with that whole uh, Manicore buff. Uh, they do get a little bit of a, a, an increase there. But let us now jump over to the Mighty Empire, and, and, I, and I hope that we get more Empire buffs in the future. Um, this isn't a, a huge ton of... There, there, there are a lot of significant buffs, but they're not anything I'd say that's going to completely redefine them. But Balthazar Geltz gets his little hide and force thing. Altorf Griff fights, they can't hit as, hit, as more, hit as often with melee attack knockdown, but they do get a little buff to the melee defense. Children's Revenge, minus 4 melee attack, minus 25 in cost. So kind of a weird kind of uh, middle ground there. Zillers Reich's Guard, minus 2 charge, minus 3 attack. So... They kind of get their, uh, their wings clipped a little bit, but also a little bit stockier and that they can stay in the fight a little bit longer. The biggest thing here for the Empire, though, is, well, as far as uh, debuffs go, added immune to psychology and magical attacks to the Witch Hunter. Great. Reduced missile penetration. Okay, whatever. Accusation now has three max uses. I, th I don't think that's a bad thing. <laughs> Accusation is so strong as it is that I think that it was a really good balance choice, and I'm really excited about that. The Luminarch of Haish. Um, and the Tempelhof Luminarch both got kind of a retweaking, so a little bit increased ammo, mass reduction in their damage, and uh, their amount of explosion damage as well, and also a reduction in their cost, which is cool. Aura Protection now gives plus 12% ward save in 40 meter radius, and deactivates when available magic power is below 15. You kind of have to strike that balance between high winds of magic and low winds of magic to get that 12% ward bonus. Locus of Hayish now passively reduces enemy magic power recharge rate by 20% for each wizard in play. It doesn't say enemy wizard, so cool thing to note there. As far as the buffs go for Empire, some pretty cool ones. Now, we didn't get a chance to really get into this, but almost every single, so the Prophetess and the Dark Elf and the Empire wizard lords all get access to, or heroes, um, I'll, I'll get access to some sort of new cool scroll. So the channeling staff is removed and placed with a scroll of blast item. It's a big like AOE blast. So it does a lot of the damage. Really cool. Very thematic. Pretty different. Better than channeling staff. Boris Toddbringer got a little buff. Better leadership. Better armor on this horse. Carl Franz got a little buff to his melee defense. Empire Captain as a whole got the same. Got a buff with their uh, little bit better armor. Warrior Priest as a whole got a significant buff. 35 armor with a plus 100 in cost. That doesn't apply, though, to... Uh... God, what's his name? The Master of, of, of uh, Warrior Priest, I just can't think of, with the Master of Mustaches. Um, whatever, it'll come to me. But it doesn't say that that applies to him. It just says all. So I don't know if it's supposed to apply to him or not, that it's Legendary Lords included in that. But I guess we'll find out. Empire Knights have that increase to mass across the board. All their cavalry. Crossbowmen and handgunners got a little increase to their damage as well. Handgunners get more AP and more base damage. While crossbowmen get better AP and one minus to their base damage. Uh, the cannons get increased to their accuracy, which is great. And the steam tanks get a very, very huge buff. Melee attack drop, but a huge bonus to infantry and uh, bonus versus infantry and uh, their health. Hammer of Witches. Um, I don't really care about these two things because I don't really give a crap if the hammer of witches gets in combat it's just gonna it's just gotta kind of make it until it gets relieved but to get a reduction in cost and it got to increase its accuracy so i think that overall makes for a buff for it the sunmaker as well and the hellstorm rocket battery both got those kind of tweaks i was talking about to explosions minus 20 base uh, explosion base damage plus 25 explosion ap damage plus one detonation radius as well in projectiles now 70 percent ap damage which is pretty good you're definitely going to be doing a lot more AP damage with these than you were before because you weren't doing that much. So that's really good to see. Uh, Silver Bullets got uh, increased their base missile damage as well. You guys can kind of see what's going on here. Pistol Ears have a little bit increased their accuracy. Now, the last one on our list. Oh, no, no, no. There's the Petronians still too. Shit. I'm jumping all over the place. Let's talk about the uh, the dwarfs here. Uh, you can see the dwarfs got a, a, a pretty, pretty wide sweeping set of... Um, 
debuffs to their overall kind of stockiness of, of certain things like the uh, Iron Breakers, the Skolder Guard, stuff like that. So you can see that kind of a slight slight tweaks here and there, Ekron Miners. Um, Thorgrim, though, gets new Oath of Vengeance ability, allowing Thorgrim to reduce the melee defense of an enemy unit, which is great. Ungrim gets his new Red Ruin, and Grombrandal gets two melee defense. So nice little tweak there. And tweak the Dwarf generic character item choices for multiplayer battles. Uh, that means the Thane no longer has access to uh, the Tormentor Sword. Uh, Rune Lord gets an anvil of power with a plus increase to the cost on that and adds Locus of Power ability to, to be automatic. Eh, okay. Master Engineer gets some buffs. Grumbling Guard gets some buffs here with their increased melee attack and, and uh, they add a charge defense versus large, which I think is pretty huge because they're a pretty mainstay in a lot of dwarf builds. Uh, Goblobbers and um, Grudge Throwers both get increased to accuracy. You get a little bit of a knockdown with your, your Dragonback Slayers, but they get a huge bonus to their melee defense. So I'm, I'm totally okay with it. Totally, totally okay with it. And the Skyhammer and Gyro Bombers get an increased Clatter Gun accuracy. But now, our true last people here. The Bretonians for the Lady. Now, their Grail Relic is their only debuff. Minus 86, 866 to health, but it's still cheaper to get. But all nine flying mounts, non-flying mounts have, uh, or knights have uh, increased a mass. Albrick is, uh, that Spirit of the Tempest is now an uncommon ability versus a rare ability, so it's a little bit cheaper. And the Prophetess gets that, um, the scroll I was talking about. So a scroll of Assault of Stone. It basically causes this hailstorm of, of uh, stone boulders that will take a unit of phoenix card down to half health if not lower so it's a very 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 strong spell it makes prophetess actually pretty competitive I, I'm, I'm down with it now all of a sudden <laughs> um pegasus knights get a little cool bonus here or a little a little cute tweak a little cool tweaking reduce unit spacing distance allowing more men to connect with their charge um then various tweaks and everything to health charge bonuses armor mass on the green knight is now plus 600 so he is just a freight train and then again here's that explosion and AP damage and everything for the uh, Blessed Field Trebuchet. So this kind of covers our balance changes for all the races, guys. Um, at the very bottom of the uh, patch notes, you can see that they also did some stuff with some of the spells. I encourage you guys to go head on over there. I A lot of the spells, I, ca I can't recall off the top of my head to know how impactful this is. So I don't want to like give you guys information on that and have it be just completely false and just erroneous. I'm not, I'm not the master of spells like Turin is. Um, but it is definitely worth noting and going over there to check those things out. I mean, you can definitely see stuff like Shem's Burning Gaze. Uh, definitely isn't the AP monster that it once was. That's air quotes, fake sarcasm. But it does a considerable more just ter um, outright damage. Um, and you got little things that are increased here and there that I think I should definitely check out. Check out Fatabuna changed entity hit chance from 0.25 to 0.18. Uh, thanks to Janet and Gobble King on this, the, the, that still doesn't do much of anything. Fatabuna is still brokenly strong. So. Be on the lookout for that. And then the known issue, Hellebond, the Curse of Blade ability, currently continues to apply damage, even when its effects should be blocked by phase recharge. So this kind of covers everything here today, guys, on the, the big, huge patch notes that are coming out tomorrow. Hopefully this guy has gave, this gave you guys a better idea of what is important from the unit balancing or what some of the bigger things are. And if you have any questions, anything you want to talk about those those uh, these patch notes, go ahead and comment, subscribe, like, do all the stuff that I always say at the end of these videos that seems to be working. <laughs> but thanks so much for watching here today, guys. Have a good one and take care.